Welcome to the ministry of Pastor Obi Pax Harry, an apostolic and prophetic voice of our time, being used by God to impact lives and to change cultures. Sit back, open your Bible, and get ready to be transformed by the Word of God. Good day, everybody. Good to be before you again. Um, this is probably the last um, session on our series, sec securing, you know, your future. I believe it is the. Uh, uh, the plan of God. It is the will of God that we understand his ways, his will, his plan for us. Indeed, he said to um, uh, Judah that he knows the thoughts that he thinks toward them in Jeremiah 29, 11. One of my favorite scriptures, thoughts of good, not of evil, to give them a future and a hope, to give them a future and hope. Uh, and one translation says to bring them to an expected end. So God wants us to be a people that are uh, perceptive, a people that are walking hand in hand uh, with the Lord, that is walking at heel, you know, with the Lord, understanding his plan, understanding his purpose for our lives. We're not a people called to surprise moments. We are a people that if we uh, really take our right position in God, that we do have understanding of the dealings of God in our lives. Heaven um, loves to partner with the earth concerning God, execution of God's uh, plan and purpose in our lives. So I, I am still on the, on the topic of securing your future and how to secure your future. And uh, my text, primary text is still Jeremiah 6.16. And I do not speak in an exhaustive sense, but I do actually, br I do bring you um, truth from the word of God that will enable you uh, move into a future that is going to be greater, more glorious than your past. I, I, I think somebody ought to shout hallelujah at this point. Hallelujah, yeah, yeah. Amen. So Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 says in New King James Version, Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Verse 17 says, also I said, watchmen over you saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not. Verse 18, therefore hear you nations and know all congregation what is among them. Hear, O earth, God complains to the earth. Behold, I will certainly bring calamity on this people. The fruit of their thoughts, because they have not heeded my voice, nor my law, but rejected it. For what purpose to me comes frankincense from Sheba and sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet to me. So the Lord was speaking to rebellious people uh, who would not listen to his servants, would not listen to his law, would not heed his word, but were people who felt that outward conformity to religious rituals was enough. But God was not having any of that because his word is a prescription to righteous living. His, wo uh, his word is a prescription to holy living. His word is a prescription to victorious living. Hallelujah. So here God begins to uh, speak to his people and admonish them that they must walk in old paths of righteousness. But where you can see it there that, you know, they were a people that were hard of hearing. They were an obstinate people. They were a rebellious people. And that is what sin does. Sin deafens us. Sin blinds us. Sin dulls the mind and almost takes from a man a woman the ability to make quality decisions so this is really a message on how you know to return to the plan of God for your life return in strength and in a, a and a, in restoration with zeal and passion to keep pursuing the, the, the future and I have said in a previous sessions that the, the, the time I believe that this begins to happen is, is defined as a cross point or a crossroads. So, and I have also declared to us 
that it, it, God who is in control of seasons and times you know we're told in Daniel chapter 2 that seasons and times are in his hands so God who is in control of seasons and times throws in I would say inter, intervenes and 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 naturally creates a season a season around us moment around us time around us that makes it possible makes it and then creates an enabling climate let's just put it that way creates an enabling climate that you know enables uh, that helps us to make quality decisions because the future is staring us you know staring us in the face we're standing in the present the past is right be behind us so by definition a, a, a crossroads or a cross point is a place of meeting of two roads it's a, a place of meeting of two roads that requires decision making for us to be able to move forward so we have been looking at this we have been um, examining this season and um, seeking to obtain wisdom from the Holy Spirit how to navigate the season we have been examining how we can bounce back from past defeats past failures to live a future that is victorious to appropriate the expect expected end that God promises in uh, Jeremiah 29 11 we have also been looking at how we must recognize the season in our life because recognizing the season means we are able to do something about it we're able to cooperate with heaven that it is important that we know and understand that it is important that we know and understand that God supernaturally introduces the season not because we qualify but because he's God he's a covenant keeping God covenant making God so he creates the season in our lives uh, an atmosphere to help it climate that enables us to be like the sons of Issachar or to operate in the grace of the sons of Issachar to understand where we're at in our life's experiences to know just where we are at and then we are able to make decisions you know that uh, uh, that help us to move forward in our lives it's, it's really an examine an uh, exci exciting season but here's what uh, is um, tricky about the season that if we don't interpret if we don't interpret accurately if we don't define accurately if we don't name it accurately we could really be like samuel we can begin to mourn after saul we can we, we can the, the the atmosphere that we live in you know what we've come with from the past can dominate our present and can actually create a moratorium on our, on our present it can create a mold you know like plasticine it can mold us and shape us into hope deferred it can it can it can set us in a mold that is not what god wants for us actually it is a time moment season that god wants to break molds off of us see what i'm saying so if we don't interpret you know this moment this time this season that i am you know articulating you know to you that i'm bringing to you uh, uh with the benefit of revelation that the lord gave to me uh a, a, a few weeks back you know that i have been mulling over and studying if we're not able to interpret it look the consequence can be going back in reversal reversing back into the things of the past or just being stagnant where we're at because we've not understood it we can really enter into the syndrome of the cripple you know 38 years in you know fixated in in, in just you know one perception that somebody's going to come to help you and everybody else is trying to help themselves break out of mold so it, it really is a is a very very delicate season and i do believe that we, that's a time that the church has come into hence the lord has sent me to you to bring you his word just like the prophets of old we saw in jeremiah you know chapter 6 and verse 17 god says also i set watchmen over you saying listen to the sound of the trumpet the trumpet is a word listen to the sound of my word listen to the sound of revelation but they said we will not I, I, watchman is, is one is a term that 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 relates to refers to also you know for uh, 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 true it's a term that is used for true prophets you know in the, in the, in the bible time so god sent them true prophets to warn them 
to, uh, to alert them, to, 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 to arouse them, you know, but they would not listen because they were set in their ways. So we, we could just be like that, that uh, cripple in, uh, at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5 who is making excuses. Everybody else is able to crawl their way into the water, push their way into water because they could recognize that the angel of the Lord had come to stir the waters. So they could recognize that it's the seasons change. There is a stirring of the waters. There's a shifting of the waters of healing, the pool of healing. And, you know, so there is, you know, so what's happening before you that the Lord allows you to perceive, not with natural eyes, but your spirit just picks it up. You know, that also gives you the oomph. That gives you the zeal. You know, the just the zeal of the Lord consumed. That gives you the zeal, the passion to push forward towards that breakthrough. It's not a time that anybody else is going to come and help you. It's a time of great responsibility because that future that you have been praying about, that future that you have been wanting to move into calls for responsibility, truly. Every um, uh, incidence or experience of promotion is opportunity to come into what we may call a higher level, higher dimension, but let me tell you what about promotion. Promotion brings greater responsibilities because you're going to manage more for God. You're going to manage more resources. You're going to manage uh, more gifts and talents. You're going to, you know, you're going to be accountable to more people. So really it calls for responsibility taking. And at the, at the core of the uh, creation of man, that is at the core of the call of any child of God is stewardship and stewardship is about responsibility in fact the Greek word that translates steward is a household manager so every born again spirit filled child of God who is under that mandate of the great commission is a steward is a household manager is a housekeeper of God's manifold grace of which Psalm 24 tells us that the earth is his and all of his fullness so we're all called to manage all of his fullness the people that dwell in there in the on the earth belong to god so he's even already chosen your connections he's chosen your your relationships your partnerships so there comes moments in your life where you have to you know stop you have to halt you have to stand, you know, to recognize these partnerships, for instance, these relationships, for instance, the uh, uh, wisdom that you're going to use, apply to your future. And the wisdom you're going to apply to your future is coming from past defeats. It's coming from those circumstances and situations that you dreaded, you hated, and you thought you were never going to come out of. So again, we are talking about a very delicate time. And I am being deliberately repetitive because, you know, the Lord, it's the word of the Lord is like a burden on me as it was on the uh, prophets of old that people understand the importance of this season that I call an intersection that you know I, I call a crossroads and I also call a cross point. Webster, um, a Webster dictionary defines crossroads as a crucial point especially where a decision must be made. That, that's really profound. A crucial point a crucial point that's profound on itself in its in, in itself especially where a decision must be made uh, that's really quite quite uh, uh, profound another definition is a point at which a crucial decision must be made which will have far reaching consequences isn't it incredible isn't it incredible it, it's such an important time of our life that I'm not surprised that the Lord will want us to understand. So really we're at a point where we have to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We have to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Hallelujah. We have to hear. So it's a time in our life that gives us, number one, opportunity to redeem time, to buy back time. Number two, it gives us opportunity to see that is to perceive. It gives us opportunity to perceive. It gives us opportunity, you know, to 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 um, to um, express the, the the prophetic anointing and grace upon our lives. To see, to perceive, to to expand. 
expand our scope and our uh, uh, horizon and deepen our relationship with the Holy Spirit, our dependency on the Holy Spirit is going to be called for more because that it's by His help that we are able to see, that we're able to know. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 tells us that, that we're able to know the things that have been freely given to us. So this season's our time or moment presents to us also uh, number three opportunity to set things right opportunity to think, set things right because what we we are able to gain from the from uh, objective evaluation of our past gives us opportunity in the now to make decisions that make our future uh, a place of rest as we read from jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 number four it gives opportunity to launch out into the deep like Simon, he gives opportunity to launch out into the deep. So, you know, we recognize that Jesus is coming to our boat. We recognize that the Holy Spirit is assisting us. We recognize that the, even in our emotions, you know, there are things that we have overcome. You understand the soul wounds we've overcome, you know, the things of the emotion that we have overcome that make us people who can overlook so much, you know, laugh at the enemy, make decisions that literally have us launching out into the deep. Simon Peter had given up for the evening. He had given up the water. You know, the, 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 the waves had, you know, calmed. The water was calm. The, the, the waves weren't even high enough for him to be able to catch anything. Like, yet Jesus came. And when he came, came, he asked for Simon's boat. He converted that boat into an auditorium. And he began to teach, you know, eternal principles. And this is really what Jeremiah says God, God was saying to his people. That you need to ask for those eternal principles you know that will lead you on the paths of righteousness that take you into a place of rest so really what God is saying to us is you know you have to go back to the principles that are eternal principles that work principles of my word that will take you put you right back on the road of righteousness which is before you in the future so that you are able to find rest your future becomes a future that you can partner with heaven to govern and to administrate to govern and to administrate so it's also a season that gives you the opportunity to deal with consequences of your past disobedience it's it's really it's it's really incredible really incredible really really awesome so you know so the revelation knowledge that we gain at times like this uh, is what helps us to redeem time according to ephesians chapter 5 verse 16 and we heard in um, last uh, the last session that to to redeem time is to buy back time you know because the bible tells us that the days are evil so how do we the days are evil how do we you know conduct ourselves in evil days is to come with superior wisdom and superior knowledge that we came from the word of God. So we buy back time by, you know, looking back the wisdom we've gained from the things that we have overcome. We value that wisdom and we put it to good use and make decisions at those cross points, at the place where we halt. We halt. One translation says halt, says stand, you know. So we halt. And I said in past sessions that unless you understand that it's a temporary pause, it's a halt, it's a standing in the place of strength, it's a mental, you know, position as it is a physical position. So it, it isn't, it isn't a delay. Okay. God may require you to stand for a month. He may require you to stand for six months. Just how long it takes for you to understand what is happening in your life, how long it takes for you to perceive what God is doing in your life that's how long he's going to have you you know in that position mentally uh, in that position physically in that position emotionally so you can see why it is very very important for us to um, to understand what is happening in our lives okay now like I said it is important we understand it is important i want i want to just examine some of the words that that stand out in um jeremiah chapter um chapter 6 verse 16 so that again by the end of this experience we have raised an army that are able to advance an army that are able to become a conquering army an army that are, are able to become a governing army for the Lord 
upon the earth. So what, what your sphere of influence, you become somebody that is going to manage your future with wisdom and knowledge and understanding and not by folly, because by instruction also. You become somebody who can be counted on. You become somebody who can be celebrated. You become somebody who the wisdom of God in you can be celebrated. Your aptitude can be celebrated. People say your, uh, your attitude will determine your altitude. I also say that it's not just your, uh, uh, your attitude that determines your altitude. I, I believe that your aptitude also determines your altitude. So what you understand from the Holy Spirit, what you allow the Spirit of God to, to, uh, to deposit in you, and that you're willing to use is going to determine your altitude. It's going to determine how far that you can go. So several words jump at us from Jeremiah 16, the halt, stand. Uh, it's not just halt and stand. It's a stand in the way. So, you know, the way, the path of righteousness to see is to perceive. To ask for the old paths is to put the result of number two, which is seeing. Number, number one is hot. Like I said, it's a mental position. It's an emotional position. It's a physical position that God places you in because what God is actually looking at from you is, you know, productivity. It's a time that is supposed to produce good results out of you. It's a time that, you know, is, is supposed to produce wisdom. It's supposed to, you know, produce currency. It's supposed to produce energy out of you that helps you to move forward. That's just how you're going to move forward. So halting is hang on, just pause. It's like a, it's like a pause. It's like a, a hiatus. It's like a, a moratorium. You know, it's not created by the enemy. It is God. That's what we've been trying to say. Now we've been examining a people who were hard of hearing when God tried to do that in their lives. It did not work. It was futile. They would not listen. But now you and I, by virtue of the blood of Jesus Christ, the new covenant that is in the blood of Jesus Christ, beneficiaries of the new covenant that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, we have no reason to live in rebellion. Sin cannot have dominion over us. We are a people of grace. We are a people that have been given the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, who is our helper, to instruct us and direct us. And we are people that must hear. We are people that must listen. We are people that must hear. And as we follow the Spirit of God, then you know, we are living in advantage. We become a people that can live in the future because the spirit of God that has been given to us is to enable us to, uh, to complete the assignment, it, to enable us complete, to get even on the road of assignment of discipling nations, of preaching the gospel to all creature, you know, fulfilling destiny, making sure that we fulfill the great commission. We're not people that have been saved to just attend ceremonies. You, you see it, God said it there, that he's not even interested in all of that. He's not interested in our, uh, our ceremonial activities uh, without the Spirit of God, you know, directing. Uh, ceremonial activities that do not line up with the, his purpose, his purpose for us. So there is a halt, there is a sea, and the sea is to perceive, is to understand. So when you halt, you know, the season has been created for you to be able to, you know, judge, to be, for you to be able to assess, for you to be able to evaluate, for you to be able to receive truth, for you to be able to, you know, reject lies, for you to be able to, you know, just, you know, partner with heaven to understand what is happening in your life. It's a very difficult uh, place in, uh, in the transition of life. And unless you are willing or obedient, then you cannot eat the fruit of the land. That's really that what you know that season calls for it's a place where you get to you have to ask for the old paths so by virtue of what you the result of your seeing perceiving perception the things that you have allowed the holy spirit to show you the bible says in revelation 19 10 that the spirit of prophecy is a testimony of jesus christ what you allow the spirit of prophecy to introduce into your life to uh, illuminate to to expose you know to help you you know to move forward so result of the number two, which is to see, will help you to then ask number three for the old paths. It will help you because you now are in a position of objectivity. You're in a position where your spirit is ruling your flesh and not your flesh, not your soul ruling your spirit. And so you can put the result of your evaluation, 
the seeing to action by asking and to ask is to desire so you're desiring the truth the old ways you're desiring the things that make good for you you're wanting teachings that will help you you know come back to the where you ought to be with God you are now rejecting you know persuasive words of human wisdom you are looking for the demonstration of spirit and power knowing that the kingdom of God is not in word but you know Paul the apostle writes in 1 Corinthians 4 uh, chapter 4 verse 20 that it is in it is in power so you're now you know in a position where you're desiring the old ways the paths of righteousness the scriptures that you held on to and you saw God move in your situation you know the messages that you held on to and you saw God do wonders in your life you know the, the, the messages that convict you to repentance not the messages that you know motivate you but there is no conviction you are able to ask for those things because you know that you know now you're not in a position of maturity to even dare to move into that future you know that you can't move into that future as a child you are desiring you recognize that the earnest expectation of all creation is not looking for a child that they are looking for sons of God they are in expectation for manifestation of sons of God they are they are not waiting for children they have seen too many children now they are expecting sons they're expecting people who have evaluated their past who can now govern the uh, future that God can make custodians of the future that God can hand over the future and say take the future of your nation and handle it for me take the future of your nation and make decisions quality decisions be it in uh, elections be it in election of uh, those that govern you be it in a uh, in a uh, in a uh, in a uh, in, uh, advocacy be it in justice issues that you can be handed the future so that's that that's what happens at that third level of asking for the old paths you begin to ask for those parts of righteousness hallelujah the order you know you begin to seek divine order you begin to notice things you know you can actually come into your destiny as a change agent it no longer becomes a cliche you want to like the butterfly you know you be in the life cycle of a butterfly you're just at that stage where you just wanna you know metamorphose you know what I mean and come out to become who you're supposed to be you're seeking identity now you want to come out of identity crisis you can say I know who I am in Christ Jesus and you can say I know who Christ is in me and number four level is to walk in it so you become a person now who can follow wisdom gained you become a person who can follow wisdom that have been gained from your time number one time of halting of standing number two time of seeing perceiving number three time of instruction direction asking for the old path okay so you now come to the fourth level where you can walk in the results of number one, number two, number three. Okay? You can now walk in the results of what you have gained from the time of moratorium, the stand, time of halting, the time of pausing as a cross, at a cross point. Your cross point time, your crossroad season, your intersection time. You can now use the wisdom gained to make a decision to follow follow the right path to follow paths of righteousness to follow principles that lead you in the right way and keep you in good stead with God only then can you find rest number five only then can you find rest I've just been taking us through five basic principles uh, uh, from Jeremiah chapter 16 uh, 6 verse 16 that the Lord says if you follow these you will find rest he said look I told Judah the same thing they did not I, I said it to my people they would not hear I sent them prophets they would not listen there was no option but for Babylon to take them over but God is bringing us out of mystery Babylon hallelujah God is bringing us out of mystery Babylon and he's really saying to us by his Holy Spirit you don't need to be in that Babylon Babylon does not need to take you over he said God is bringing down Jezebel that that whore that whore that captivates uh, captivated uh, ba Babylon you don't need to you are God's battle axe that he will use to defeat Babylon you are one that should prophesy to Babylon that her days are over he said then you will find rest 
you, then you will find rest. Now Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Let's just go to Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Remember that it's by the Spirit of God that we know the things that have been freely go, uh, given to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. So the Spirit of the Lord is hereby instructing you and I, directing us, teaching us that the way we have come to a point, the global church of Christ, the global church of Christ have come to a point, a crossroads point, globally, not one nation without the other, not one space without the other. We have come to a point where we're going to have to make decisions of how we go forward. Are we going to cooperate with heaven, what heaven is saying to us, whether by the spirit, or are we going to go back into into our rebellious ways are we going to go back into hordom or are we just going to stand still and not make decisions because we have not perceived the season and we just would rather just stay in in childishness or are we going to cooperate with the with heaven and make those decisions of that that that, that only sons can make that those that carry the government of God on their shoulders that we can make these decisions that cause our nations to move forward with us that cause lands to come into restoration to come into peace are we going to enter into responsible stewardship of the things that have been handed handed over to us that Jesus said occupy until I return so Galatians chapter, uh, chapter 5 verse 16 says to us it says I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh walk in the spirit and you will desire the old parts you will desire what brings you to a place of rest hallelujah for the flesh lost against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish so basically you cannot be like Bibi Kujuda who wanted to do what they wished so they would not heed the voice of the prophets today the spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus Christ hallelujah every born again spirit filled child of God is a prophetic vessel even though we're not all prophets so we cannot hear the spirit of God we cannot hear the admonition of the Holy Spirit we cannot hear the instruction and the direction it says you cannot heed to the things of the spirit if you're walking in the flesh because the two are contrary if you're lost in against if you're, if you're lost in for the flesh you know you cannot they're diametrically opposed they have no business you know the flesh lost against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh they are at war it is a war and it says these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish so the only way to heed the voice of the Lord. The only way to secure your future is to manage your cross point season wisely. Is to manage your crossroads wisely, judiciously. Is to manage the season and time of your life with grace and divine capacity. Uh, with, you know, not with emotion. But by the Spirit of God, you know that, no, 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 no. I'm not listening to the enemy. I know where I am. I have come through the fire. I have come through the waters. I have come through the desert. And I'm standing at a point where I am seeing the future. And the future is worth fighting for. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are, you are the, that one slaves whom you obey? Whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness, you cannot stand, you cannot see the old paths. You can't even ask for that direction. You cannot ask the questions that take you back full circle to a starting point like Abraham where you build that first altar to God that God can meet you at that point or your, your first altar you cannot do that in the flesh he said do you not know that to whom you 
present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. So the church, you cannot, you cannot make yourself slave to sin. You cannot make yourself align with the devil and expect to get results of the righteous. You cannot. But here's what God is saying. The time has come and the hour has come where we must return, stand by the ways and look and ask for the eternal path. The Amplified Version says, we must ask for the eternal path, the path of righteousness, so that we can bring break the mold of sin over the over the church that it becomes again a strong church it becomes again that bride that jesus christ is coming for he said ask for the eternal path where the good old way is that's where the good we need to return we need to ask for the eternal path where the good old way is he said then walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. I mean, we're living in the days where pastors are being murdered, where the enemy is coming into church, and I mean, there's martyrdom, there's killing, slaughtering of servants of God. I mean, the enemy is eyeballing believers. You know, the, the Antichrist spirit is the spirit of, uh, of lawless, the spirit of lawlessness and the mystery of lawlessness is spewing out on our streets. All you need to do is turn on your television. And you know, people are asking, I mean, plagues ravaging the church cancer just ravaging the church the enemy seems to not have any fear anymore he cannot understand boundaries he's seeking to cross boundaries but there must be a people that must rise up and say Satan the Lord rebuke you there must be a people that must stand up and say Satan rebuke the Lord rebuke you there must be a people God is calling for a people that can stand by the roads and look and ask for the eternal parts where the good old way is then they are ready to walk in it. There must be a people who come into remembrance of what it was that made them invite Jesus into their life, into their heart as Lord and Savior in the first place. There must be a remembrance of what made us give our lives to the Lord. Enough already. The enemy is eyeballing us. Kalima Sakata Mahanda. In the day of David, Philistine and Israel were mountain to mountain, eyeball to eyeball. And so they could hear the tauntings of Goliath. They could hear the tauntings of Goliath. They could see him in full view and fear and dread. Trepidation took them over. Because if the enemy makes himself so big, so large before you, Kaliyama Sohonde Basikata, then his reality, his reality is there for you. But if you, if you make him so little, then you don't even recognize his reality. But he's taking over, he's wanting everybody to recognize his reality. So the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6 verse 16, do not you not know? This is a question. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey you are that one's slaves whom you obey? If you present yourself slaves to, to uh, mystery Babylon, present yourself slaves to unrighteous mammon, present yourself sla uh, slaves to sin, then you will be slaves to those things because you're obeying them. You're obeying them. You're cooperating with the devil to open doors and give access to the enemy to be able to cross boundaries and do what he's not meant to do to the righteous. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointed. Hallelujah. Touch not my anointed. Now Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 tells us, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. You're walking according to the spirit. There should be no co condemnation. You should be able to recognize seasons of your life. You should be able to come to that point. Partner with the Holy Spirit. Know where you're at. Make decisions because you're under a different law. Verse 2 says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You have to declare your freedom. You have to declare your freedom from law of, 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 of sin and death. You have been made free but through Jesus Christ. That spirit of life is what you have in Christ Jesus. You are not under the law. You are not subject to the law of sin and death. You have to be the prophet of your life. You have to decree that over your life. That sin will not have dominion over you. Sin will not have dominion over you. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Our Lord. 
Romans chapter 6 verse 23 to live in eternal uh, um, I have to announce to you that you have to be a person that can stand number one you have to be a person that can stand we are under a commission to go ye go is a verb it's a word that requires an action it is an action word it requires responsibility bearing so burden bearers is who you are called to be and burden bearers are people of prayer whom the Lord can trust with his concerns for his world and the Lord wants to trust, trust you with con his concerns for your nation they are prophetic people who enjoy relationship with the Lord to have their ears glued to his heart they are people who know how to stand they are people who understand the command of the Lord to be still and know that he is God I love Habakkuk Habakkuk stands in uh, chapter 2 verse uh, 1 to 3 you read it you know, having questioned God concerning his nations, his nation, he made a decision. He said, I will stand. I will stand. He recognized that having asked God these questions, there is a crossover moment. The answer that he receives and the decision he makes is going to create the crossover anointing for him. Hallelujah. He said, I will stand my watch. I will stay in my, in my position because I know God is going to speak to me. I know God is going to say something to me. It's, 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 so when a person, group, community, church, gathering, business, and even nations are in dire streets, our prayer must be for God to raise men and women who know how to stand. Who know how to stand. And that is what heaven is calling of you. Hallelujah. Heaven is calling of you to be able to stand. So standing is a posture of expectation in a crossover season and at a crossroads place. Standing is a posture of expectation in a crossover season and at a crossroads place. I, uh, Habakkuk said, I will stand my watch. He said he will stand his watch. He is a decision that he made that he will stand his watch. You have to stand in the ways. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We have to be a people that recognize that. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26 verse seven, the way of the just is uprightness. Oh, most upright, you weigh the path of the just. God weighs the path of the just. Isaiah 26 verse 1 says, Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter. Open the gate at the crossroads, the decision we make opens the gate to our nations. It opens the gate. The, how we are able to uh, intercede for our nations. How we are able to call the kingdom to come into our nation you know qualifies our nation to become a nation that can go forward that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter so there is really a, a demand of heaven for us to come into this posture of standing posture of 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 seeing posture of asking and then you know walking so that we can come into a place of rest right standing before god gives us access to see psalm 25 verse 14 says that he reveals his covenant to those who fear him Hallelujah. He reveals and he gives them perfect peace. And perfect peace here we're talking about the Hebrew was shalom. Implying happiness, peace, well-being. Happiness, peace, well-being. Who doesn't want that? I want that for myself. The word that translates mind, you know, in, in Isaiah 26 verse 3 there, it says, it says, Isaiah there is alluding, you know, alluding to a person whose creative imagination. So even the peace we get, our creative imagination is impacted. You know, we're, we're, we're firmly planted in the place of God where we enjoy full shalom. Shalom in all of its, uh, 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 in all of its sense. So we become a people that our creative imagination is impacted so it were people that can stand that can stand still on jeremiah 6 um, 16 so we come to that place of seeing i'm just summarizing now concluding so we have to be a people that can stand we have to be a people that can see and we know that the hebrew word for see is ra you know which does not relate to seeing with physical eyes but to a mental perception so we have to be a people that can perceive what's happening all around us this will affect the decisions that we make. Proverbs 4, 18 teaches us to know that the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter onto the perfect way. The path of a man or a woman that can stand and see and perceive what God wants of himself, herself, her family, her city, her nation, her church, all around her will shine brighter and, and, and brighter, ever brighter onto the perfect day, onto the perfect day. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 8 says do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you rebuke a wise man and he will love you so do not correct a scoffer 
by the grace of God we're not scoffers so the Lord can correct us the Lord can bring us revelation wisdom by which we move forward he said do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you a scoffer one that is stiff neck one that is obstinate like the biblical judah that would not hear the instruction and direction of god to return to that place to ask for direction to go back to the paths of righteousness to go back to what worked hallelujah uh -huh. so those are scoffers and scoffers don't get anything from god scoffers don't get but rebuke a wise man and he will love you thank god god is not rebuking us he's bringing us revelation verse 9 says give instructions to a wise man and he will be still wiser we're going to be wiser i say we're going to be wiser i say we're going to be wiser say give instructions to a wise man and he will be still wiser teach a just man and he will increase in learning father i just want to thank you that we're increasing in learning thank you holy spirit for the revelation that you're bringing to us that we are increasing in learning thank you for increasing our capacity to learn thank you for increasing our capacity to make right decisions that help us to navigate our present so that our future will be more glorious than our past Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 32 says, He who disdains instruction despises his own soul. We have to be instructable. It says, But he who heeds rebuke gets understanding. Father, thank you, Father, that we get an understanding. It says, We should ask for directions to the old path. Directions. Directions to the old path. Proverbs 25 verse 2 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. To ask for direction. To seek out the direction. To seek out, you know, the principles. To seek out even men and women of old. The patriarchs of old. And how they work that we can learn of them. Kalima Sakata. And it's a personal responsibility thing. You can't even blame it on, on, on pastor. Pastor hasn't taught us. Pastor, I say it's a moment, it's a season. It's a time that God introduces our lives that gives us, you know, the opportunity to agree with heaven whether we're going to move forward or not. You don't, you can't heap it on your pastor. You can't heap it on your, pro, you can't be prophesied into that place. You're going to get it wrong. It's a place where you come, you agree with God. You partner with heaven. You believe in the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you. That the Spirit of God can instruct you. You repent of your obstinacy you repent of your hard-heartedness you repent of any form of rebellion that could uh, that could shut you out of your future that could keep you in a now and keep you in cyclical movement like Israel that skirted the mountain for so long until they were asked that question in Jeremiah 2 for how long will you skirt this mountain skirt about the mountain and it was time to move forward for Proverbs 29 verse 18 teaches us to know that where there is no revelation the people cast off restraint straight but happy is he who keeps the law where there is no revelation you're not going to know that you have come to a crossroads where heaven just naturally creates everything infuses the atmosphere the heaven infuses the climate plants people around you that would help you make quality decisions that will make your tomorrow better than your today that will make your tomorrow and your today better than your yesterday but the enemy will want you to concentrate on your yesterday because by concentrating on yesterday he's depleting depleting your energy by concentrating on yesterday he's at attacking your emotion which affects your ability to make those decisions he's dulling your mind ha he's able to introduce lies he's able to bring his deception he just doesn't even want you to hear what i'm telling you if he had his way you won't even be listening whether by tape or by presence you will not be hearing anything like this hallelujah but god is god bible says in um teaches us solomon the wise proverbs 4 30 said take firm hold of instruction do not let her go keep her for she is your life she is your life instruction is our life instruction is our life father we just want to thank you thank you holy spirit thank you spirit of god thank you spirit of wisdom thank you spirit of knowledge thank you spirit of understanding thank you spirit of might thank you spirit that brings us into the fear of the lord we bless your holy name thank you father that you would love us so that you would not father allow us to miss the mark Thank you, my Lord and my God, for everybody under the sound of my voice. Thank you, my Lord and my God, that now we are in a position, Father, to make those right decisions that make our future greater than our past. Thank you, Father, that you have put in us capacity. Thank you that we're going to steward, Father, even more wisely. 
Thank you, Father, that you can trust us, O oh God, with your manifold grace. You can trust us with your glory. You can trust us with businesses that are coming. You can trust us with your finances. You can trust us with relationships. You can trust us, oh God, with your economy. You can trust us, oh God, in the place of government. You can trust us, oh God, in the place of politics. That we will not bow our knees to bow, so God. That we will not go, Father, in the still of the night to swear to secret altars just because we want power. That we will recognize, oh God, that only true power is the power of your kingdom, the power that is in your name, the power that is in your blood, the power of the finished work of the cross. Father, I just want to thank you, O God, because you are God. Father, blessed be your holy name. Thank you for the season of truth. Thank you for season of light. Thank you, my Lord and my God, that you are calling the church, Father, to that place of light and saltiness, O God. Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus, O God, my Lord and my God, that the mountain of your house, Father, shall be established, O God, over, O God, every other mountain. We just honor you. Thank you, my Lord and my God. Lord, I decree and declare to everybody under the sound of my voice that, Father, they will hear clearly, that they will understand, O God, that there will be impartation, my Lord, that there will be, O God, apostolic anointing, O God, the mobile anointing to cause, O God, everybody that hears to go ye, O God, that in their minds, O God, they will be stead to go. Father, with their bodies, they will be stead to go. Father, with their spirit, O God, they will be stead, O God, God, Father to go. Well, with their bodies certainly they will be set to go and Lord they will be unstoppable. The gates of Hades will not prevail against them. Thank you my Lord and my God for the time has come for us to secure the future oh God. Future of nations, future of continents my Lord and my God. Father Lord that the angel at the gate of nations is waiting oh God to partner with the church oh God. My Lord I thank you for manifestation of the sons of God. Father those that are led by your spirit. Blessed be your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for listening. To order more copies of this message or other messages, you can order from our Nehemiah Apostolic Resource Center or nehemiahcenter at gmail.com. You can also contact our European office, contact at RLA Church.